Yeah, I'm Ingrid Kalam, uh, traces of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Well, Lisa Fryman called and initially asked me to look at the forest. <laughs> and I love forests. And we went in the golf cart, you know, all around. And um, But uh, I said to Elise Goldberg, my dealer, from New York, I said, make sure that we have some time at the at the speedway. And she thought I said freeway. <laughs> and you know, which wouldn't be unlike me to want to do the freeway. But I was like, no, the speedway. And so we um, had a little we had the tour and then we had after lunchtime, but we had to catch a plane pretty quickly. And so um, the uh, we were gonna take a cab back from there or something to the airport and Elise thought that was a bad idea because she knew the speedway was giant and like and it was uh, just before the 400 so Lisa Fryman um, Elise and I all went out there and um, it was it was pretty crazy. I mean, it was crazily humongous, and there were a lot of people and cars parking and parking and parking. We were worried we weren't going to get back to the airport. And, but anyway, so <clears throat> when I saw the cars, you know, doing the trials before the 400, uh, I, I was really hoping that we'd be able to do the project because it was so beautiful and loud and uh, colorful, and it, it was just the kind of thing that I love to work with. So. Um, but I couldn't get on the speedway, so I had no idea if there would be any marks. And the person from the speedway who took us on the tour said that they um, they clean fanatically, so that even in the garages and stuff, there's no oil spills, there's nothing um, to to trace. He thought, but um, when I got back here, fortunately, he was wrong. <laughs> Well, I trace on tr drafting, Architects Drafting Mylar, which is very durable. You, they use it for sales, and it's, uh, I use that because I use it over and over again. I started many years ago with tracing paper, but it disintegrates almost immediately. And I, and I trace, um, I've traced marks on streets and sidewalks generally. It's always on the ground, and it's always public or publicish. I don't trace inside houses or, you know, anything like that. It's all out, outdoors. And, um, the size of the tracings are dime size to to 200 foot long at the speedway. W how it works is I've been tracing for uh, since 1998 on from streets and sidewalks and uh, different locations, and um, they all start to have a character from not only of the, what made the mark, but also who I was when I was tracing them. And then at a certain point, for, for several years, I traced alone, and the, the marks all evolved. Then um, when I started using assistants to help me trace, because the marks starting to get more intricate, um, who I was tracing with affected how the marks look. And I end up not using all the marks all the time at all. I sort of curate what marks I use. I used everything from the Speedway for the Speedway drawings uh, and paintings because it takes so long to trace them that I end up using all the material I have. Similarly, um, uh, I've used everything that I've traced over and over again. So the Speedway will probably will be in more um, drawings and paintings. So I sort of curate them thinking about the time and place, not, not only the idea of the place, like the Speedway or the LA River, but also the kind of marks that I traced there, depending on the weather, the, the what made the marks, and who was tracing with me. For, for this project, I brought two assistants with me from LA, which was very helpful because it allowed me to work with more people from Indianapolis so that I don't have to be running around between all the making sure everybody understands the project because we're doing a very specific thing that some people get and some people don't get. Most people get and uh, translate it to some extent. There's subjectivity. Everybody who traces with me, the way that they trace is in there. But we're trying to make basically a closed shape out of you know, something that's gray on gray. We're making an outline and it has to be closed like a donut. Um, and so 
that takes instructing people, and if it's only me with 10 assistants, I can only go so far. I, th I think that there were 12 of us total on certain days, so that they, they were people who responded from, uh, mostly from Craigslist. That was the most successful. We tried the Heron School of Art. We tried, list, you know, on the bo art boards or whatever, and um, the, someone responded from a uh, arts association board, but... Um, Craigslist was the best, and, and they were involved in arts or not. There was a, a soccer coach who, uh, I don't think he even studied art. <laughs> Chuck Close says, uh, inspiration is for amateurs. <laughs> As an artist, in terms of what inspires me, I think I just am. It's kind of uh, a grinding machine that, you know, I just keep going, and even when I'm really tired, I keep getting ideas. <laughs> um, in terms of this project, it was very inspired by um, not knowing about the Speedway. So for me, I didn't grow up in Indianapolis, and I didn't grow up watching uh, racing, but I know about it. It's part of my culture, you know, and I felt a connection to it from from other sources, like um, those little hot rods when you're, I was a kid, the matchbox uh, cars and um, the tracks and um, Evil Knievel and, you know, and then uh, that's my <laughs> childhood generation. And that often happens with my work, like when I went into the stock exchange and used it as a container for stains from streets uh, in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and New York. The, Again, I don't come from a stock exchange background or trader background, but um, but it's part of what I hear on the radio every day, so it's part of my life. So with the with the speedway, I um, I I guess I was drawn to the marks that would be made, and that there was an architecture to them that was different from I had been using stains from streets and sidewalks, which was generated from thinking about mortality in a more abject sort of way and lo thinking about loss and the speedway seemed so um, s sort of overblown and um, all of that writ large so that it, it, it didn't it was no longer abject but became really um, uh, powerful and beautiful and not I didn't have to make it that way, it just sort of is. Although, you know, I guess some people would think tire marks are boring, but a lot of people would be interested in, you know, skid marks <laughs> and crashes, you know, and what, what is left and the fact that they don't leave the crashes is really, you know, th that, that it's so pristine is kind of remarkable. It's a, it's a break away from um, yuckier stains, <laughs> you know, uh, mostly I've been, Mm, gaining access to like the stock exchange only as a uh, a private space that being you know uh, as a container not for the marks that were left on the stock exchange floor I was just using it, the building to uh, as a form um, so the speedway used the skills those similar skills of, of um, negotiating how to get access to a private entity that I had used before but uh, the marks themselves were very different from the marks that I've been tracing, which it's, I generally have no problem getting access to the marks I want to trace because they're junky old marks that on streets or um, like the LA River is an uncared for place. This year I just had a baby. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, film? <laughs> Uh, well, I didn't see them this year, that's for sure. <laughs> they're, um, the, uh, the act of seeing with one o one's own eyes, well, Stan Brackage is an experimental filmmaker, so it's all about the visual, and he basically makes a, an incredible painting of, uh, with this in time, because of the close-ups and the, the shots accumulating till you understand the whole body of the thing. So it, he slowly reveals uh, what it is that you're seeing from the increment, which absolutely has to do with my project um, in that, uh, in the paintings and drawings, there's such detail 
overlaid that you wouldn't necessarily know that it was accurate information. And it's absolutely traced 100%, you know, no enlargement or shrinking. <clears throat> um, and it reveals a pl place, but it's not necessarily a place as you would recognize it. Well, first of all, it started as an experiment, which is a great place to start for, for a person. So, I mean, for an artist, because you, you can't totally fail at an experiment. <laughs> you know, you could go, well, it to the experiment failed, but I know this or that from it. And I wanted to see what these kind of marks would look like and just to experiment with uh, this new subject matter. And um, so, it was a success for me <laughs> that the the paintings and drawings are have a different scale than I um, expected. They're also the first rectangles that I've first group of rectangles that I've been working with. I had been working with squares for years, and so I think that there's a a lot of ideas about landscape that haven't been in my work when when it was square. So it's sort of coincidental that, it's not entirely coincidental, but I think when I moved to the rectangle and then the Speedway project came up and so they sort of fit together. Um, but the work, when I looked at it, I had a 45 minutes alone in the gallery today, which is novel, um, to be with the work. And uh, I realized that there was a lot of landscape ideas in it that I see. Sometimes for me, ideas don't come consciously, mostly ideas come unconsciously, I'll have an idea and then what other ideas sort of percolate up through them um, are unconscious. I guess in this exhibition I hope that people will be able to see the scale of it and see a relationship between the representation and the abstraction. So I'm using everything representationally in a way, but the drawings and paintings look much more abstract than the wall painting does. And you know, taking a place from the world like the Indianapolis Motor Speedway um, and representing it in, in my model of representation, that's in place and I don't expect people would know all the steps that I go through to make the things. But I do want it to be visually interesting enough that people might be curious as to how it was made. So I think the complexity of the artwork reflects a complexity of the making of it. I love looking at art. A couple of years ago, I saw, oh, I'm not gonna remember the show. It was at the Hammer Museum, but it was uh, art of the, it was art of the insane from Germany around Nazi Germany time. And it was collected because the, of the inhumanity to these people, but, and I was looking at the drawings and they're so powerful and it reminded me of what it is that I wanna do, which is you can control this little piece of paper. It doesn't matter, you know, how insane the world around you is going, or your own head is going, you can um, try to make order out of it in this one little piece of paper. And that's something that is not <clears throat> always possible. Actually, I'm answering not only why is art important to me, but the particular form that I'm choosing, which is painting and drawing. I studied filmmaking and sometimes that takes a lot of money to, to have your own idea come across. So, except with YouTube, but anyway, that's an asterisk. <laughs> but um, the, um, with drawing and painting, you don't need, you need a pencil and a napkin. You, you actually, probably you could use charcoal <laughs> or blood, I don't know, you know, you really need the most limited resources to, to have control for that, you know, five minutes over uh, um, a piece of paper. On the other hand, I also have pushed, with what I do, I pushed the control aspect into in uncontrol by trying to go out into the world. Um, I studied dance as a, as a um, youngster and um, decided not to go into it because for me, it controlled too much what my life was. Um, I couldn't go out into the world so much and, and uh, you know, the longevity of that career was short. So, <clears throat> um, but I think the idea of movement is in my work. And 
I guess I've just been affected by art my whole life. My mom took me to museums when I was Willa's age, which is six months old or younger. So, you know, art is art is amazing. It 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 lets you see other worlds. It it lets you create, express your own world, or keep trying, which is what I think all artists. I know are doing is trying to express their world or how they feel feel ultimately even if that's an un, sounds unintellectual but it's not intellectually trying to express what they f think too you know and um, and I think that reaches other it reaches me so uh, so I feel very optimistic being an artist um, trying to express my world without trying to tailor it to what other people will hear A writer. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if I'm good enough to be a writer, but I love writing and I love reading, and it's the other thing that, um, you know, when I'm blue, I read, and it, it, it's a, it's an escape, and it's just between. And the great thing about reading that I like better than art is that nobody owns it. I love the idea that if you have a book, you own the book, but you don't own the idea of the book. And I'm talking so loud, <laughs> like I'm getting excited in this very quiet room.